Okay, so welcome back. All right, let's continue um, with chapter three uh, of section three. Um, so we've established one of the key importance uh, basis for uh, living an overcome life is the cross of Jesus Christ. Right? The cross of Jesus Christ accomplished three things. What are they? Defeated Satan. He has redeemed us, right? So Satan's been defeated. The power of sin has been defeated. We've been redeemed, okay? Um, and also our identity established. Um, towards the end of it, we saw that whoever's in Christ is a new creation. Um, let's continue looking at a few more things. Of um, In this chapter, we will look at how we can use the word of God to, uh, to live an overcoming life, okay? The word of God, okay. We overcome with the word, 1 John chapter 2, verse 14. I have written to you, <clears throat> fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I have written to you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Right? Uh, because you are strong, and the word of God abides in you. Okay, so... Um, so the, what does it mean when it says that the word of God abides in us? Yeah, it simply means that he, the word is taking resident in our hearts. Right? It's taking resident in our hearts. Right? Um, and so, and everything becomes easy to access. For example, if, uh, let's say, um, I have a bag over here. Right, and I'm I'm carrying I'm carrying this bag, and for my safety, uh, let's say I have a pepper spray. Okay, for my safety. Now we can you say that as a uh, um, a weapon in a sense, right? Uh, we can self defense as well, but for the sake of self defense, for my own safety and protection, I have a pepper spray or whatever weapon you want to imagine. You you imagine, okay? Uh, but here's the thing. So now, in times of danger, if I'm attacked and whatnot, if it's far away from me, uh, it, it's it's going to take time for me to access the weapon and use it, right? Versus if it's with me, on me, right? It's not enough to know that you have a weapon. Your weapon should be easily accessible. Artmanda. <laughs> Okay, it's it's one thing to know that you have a weapon, and it's another thing to have that weapon easily accessible. Okay, so very soon we'll see that the scripture says the word of God is a sword, isn't it? Uh, but it's very important that his word uh, abides in us. It takes resident uh, in us. Okay, um, so what can we do? First point is feed your inner person with the word. Okay, feed your inner person with the word. Okay, so as believers, we must understand that nothing can take the place of our own personal reading or hearing of God's word. You can highlight that if you want. Nothing can take the place of our own personal reading of God's word. Nobody else can do this on your behalf you cannot expect me to read the bible for you and for you to be for your inner man to be strong you can't expect francis to eat everything and for you to be healthy is that possible oh. <laughs> you have to eat your own meal for you to be strong right for you to be nourished for you to uh, have sustenance, whatnot. Okay, so uh, don't expect your pastor to do all the work for you. Uh, okay. Oh, what? Oh no, my pastor is there. He'll take care of it. Oh, my pastor is there. He'll take care of it. Uh, he's prayer warrior. <laughs> <laughs> Can't say, you know. Uh, 
<laughs> no, uh, you have to take responsibility, um, right? Uh, because most of the times, what we expect is, uh, see, there's nothing wrong in imparting. I believe that, right? It's 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 biblical as well. You impart, right? You lay your hands and you 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 pray uh, for blessing over the next individual, and say, Lord, impart over him with the anointing that you have anointed me with. What I cannot impart over you is my history with God. What I cannot impart over you is my history with Him, right? All the moments that has drawn me closer to Him, all the moments in history that has uh, that's been challenging, but then He spoke to me through His Word, right? I've, I've used this example many times before, and I can use show my Bible and say, okay, on 2007 of August 14th, He spoke to me through Psalm 27, verse 8. You know, and and 2005, um, July of 2005, when I got my second PUC results, I can show you how he spoke to me through uh, Isaiah 53, 54, and how when I didn't understand the context of it, when I didn't understand who Isaiah was, uh, when I didn't understand who, what was he writing about, if he was prophesying nothing, I had no idea what the context or who Isaiah was. But yet, through his word, through the Spirit of God, he comforted me. All of those things I cannot impart. Yes? Um, so for you to live an overcoming life, an overcoming, you need to feed your inner man with the word of God. Right? Jesus used the word. We, again, so fundamental, we know the story. When the, when the devil was trying to tempt him, Jesus said, it is written. It is written. It is written. Isn't it? Um, if you know anything about the education system of the Jewish culture, uh, from the time a kid is a child is two, um, they are sent to school, and their school is uh, Bible college, <laughs> uh, Torah, right? And by the time they are eight or nine, they have memorized the entire, uh, you know, the the Torah or uh, yeah, the Old Testament, Tanakh. Now, why were you see, Jesus understood the audience that he was preaching or teaching to. Uh, and so most of the time, why, why, why the teachers of the law was offended or angry at him was not directly because of the verse that he was quoting. It is because of the verse that is before the verse he is quoting or after the verse that he is, he is quoting. Because everybody, his audience was so intelligent that they knew the context. That means they knew the Bible, uh, the Tanakh, by heart. Uh, what does it mean? Again, easily accessible, the weapon. Okay, so feed your inner person with the word. Uh, First Peter chapter two verse two it says, "As newborn babes uh, desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby." Acts twenty thirty two. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of His grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Um, in Revelation, uh, we know again, John 1, in, in the beginning was the word, he is the word of God, right? In Revelation, and uh, his name is the word of God, it says. Um, I forget that chapter, but that's what it says. Okay, uh, second point is renew your mind with the word. Renew your mind with the word simply means your mind now has to be aligned with the word of god that's what it simply is to renew your mind with the word it simply means okay you cannot your your old self has died now and you cannot continue to think the way you thought as the old man did right uh, everything your thought process uh, everything has to be in line with what uh, the word of god says are you with me? Okay. Uh, again, I've, I've made this point before, but you know this prayer that Moses makes saying, show me your ways that I may know you. One of the things that is, uh, one of the components that is, uh, that, that is associated with knowing or learning the ways of God is one, is you have to unlearn your ways. <laughs> right? Uh, to show me your ways that I may know you, uh, there's an element there where I'm going to unlearn my ways. 
that's why I'm, I'm willing to learn your ways okay and that is the renewing uh, of the mind is that our mind is now aligned to the word of god so uh, feed your inner man with the word of god um become hungry uh, for his word okay uh you you can have i mean you can just read the word read the bible you can study the bible um and you know, I I know people where they read the Bible for leisure sake. You know, leisure. What do you do in your leisure time? That means in your free time. I play badminton. I play cricket. I you know they do all these things, uh, but some some of them just read the Bible. Uh, you know, in their leisure. And so it's it's also that you know. So uh, we read the Bible. We study the Bible. That means you take the time to uh, to do a word study, to do a verse mapping. Right to do a book study, to do a character study. Right, how many of us do that? And all of that is uh, building your inner man. Yes. Uh, yeah. I sorry to disappoint you, but just coming to Bible college alone is not enough. Is genuinely, it's not enough. Uh, because again, here your the word is being taught to you. And yes, it is uh, you know beneficial, and you you are being benefited by what you're learning, right? It equips you, it empowers you, but that alone is not enough, right? You have to open up the word for yourself and and read it for yourself and meditate on it. Let it minister to you. It's it, it yeah, okay. So feed your inner man, renew your mind with the word of God, and then speak the word. Speak the word. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, we see that uh, it says, uh, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, right? So speaking the word of God is crucial for you to live an, an overcome life. Right? And Revelation, again, it talks about how uh, there was like a double-edged sword it was coming out of the mouth of Jesus. It simply is an imagery for the words. Right, um, and you know the scripture uh, again. In Revelation it says they overcame with the with the what word, right? And the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. You see the cross there, and then the word. Okay, so some there is something about declaring the word, and that is why we uh, we we make our declarations every Sunday. Uh, at APC is right. I am. I am redeemed. I am blessed. I am victorious. I am prosperous. Right. I am triumphant. I am. I am a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of His blessing. Right. There is something about declaring uh, who we are. Right. Uh, Bible says it is uh, without faith. It is impossible to please God. Right. It is without faith. It is impossible to please Him. And Psalm 19 says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you. And so something about declaring words of faith that pleases the heart of God, that causes him to act. You're following? Okay, so speaking the word is uh, powerful, right? Um, it's, if Jesus used it, I'm sure we can. I say, it is written, uh, I am born of God, I am a child of God, and therefore I am an overcomer. Is that a word? <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, Prince. <laughs> Great, I hope everybody is okay online as well, following. Okay. Great, uh, three simple points, just move on to walking in the Spirit, chapter 4. And, um, and so these first four chapters are like the basis fundamentals for the remainder of the section. It's uh, and if we understood these four chapters, um, the remaining is is the same thing that's applied or taught. Uh, walking in the spirit. Walking. Okay. okay. Uh, here's what. Uh, give me one answer, one uh, quick answer as to why it is important. For us to be uh, filled with the Holy Spirit. Why is the baptism of the Holy Spirit important? What's 
Okay. Thank you. Sorry. Okay, you can hear from God. Okay. Yeah, you can all come and flesh your desires, all right. Yeah, that is what Jesus said. Um, so my question, he's a helper, okay. Yeah, there are so many things, right? But then one of the immediate and the first things that we see what Jesus is telling uh, is that I will I will send, right? And, and, and then you will be my witnesses, right? And so that is like the key, uh, like the first point of us is the Holy Spirit helps us to be witness of Jesus. Right, and then everything else, uh, you know, uh, it's not like in different steps, but then one of the key things is that Jesus was, uh, he did everything he did with the power of the Holy Spirit, right? And with everything that he did, uh, with healing the sick, raising the dead, cleansing the lepers and all of that, he revealed the Father. That was Jesus being a witness of who his Father is. And so now with how we, we, uh, how we are witnesses of Jesus is when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, is we are called to do the same thing. We preach the gospel, right? Uh, we are called to minister, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, etc., etc. And we can do all of those things uh, with the power of the Holy Spirit, right? And so it is with the power of the Holy Spirit we can live and overcome, overcome life. Okay. Um, so uh, can we? Can someone read Romans chapter eight, verse one to fourteen, please? It's a lot of reading, but I hope it's okay. Romans chapter 8, verse 1 to 14. But what the law did not do in that it was weak in the flesh. Mm. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. Who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit. So those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but not to be but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in flesh cannot please God. But you are not in flesh, but in the spirit. But if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through spirit who dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you, if you by the Spirit, you put to death and, and the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are such. Okay, thank you. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Now, it it's interesting how it ends in verse 14, because uh, from verse 1, he uh, it talks about walking in the Spirit, right? the importance of it. And then finally, he concludes, I mean, not concludes per se, but in verse 14, he uh, says that we are led by the Spirit. Right? So if we are led by the Spirit, we can walk by the Spirit. And if we walk by the Spirit, we can overcome this life. Right? And it's very similar to the previous point that we learned that uh, for renewed mind, we need to be aligned with the Word of God. Yes? And another component or another side of the coin to live a life of holiness is 
to be led by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> okay, uh, two famous scriptures. Uh, we'll again we'll look at that in just a minute. Ephesians chapter five verse fifteen. It says, "Be filled with the uh, the Holy Spirit." Right? Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Right? Don't be drunk in wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then Colossians chapter three verse sixteen. It says, "Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly." That means let it take residence in you richly. Okay, so two important things: the word of Christ and the Holy Spirit. Okay, Ephesians chapter five actually starts off by saying, "Be imitators of Christ." And then how we can imitate Christ is through the Holy Spirit by being filled with the Holy Spirit and not being drunk with wine. Okay, um, <clears throat> so Romans chapter eight is a key. Why again? Romans chapter six talks about. How we are dead to sin. Okay, our, our old sinful man has been crucified. Romans chapter seven says, uh, "See, your flesh is going to have evil desires, fleshly desires. Uh, you know, uh, it's, it's you. You can try all that you want with your flesh, but it's going to be challenging. And then, therefore, he says, now there is therefore no condemnation. That's why Paul starts chapter eight with like that by saying, therefore." Walk in the Spirit because it is the Holy Spirit who is going to empower you to live a holy life. Are you following? That is Romans 8. Um, let's look at Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 to 26. I say that you walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh, flesh against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are conflict with one So that you do not do the things that you wish, but if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, and greed, and lightness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions. Jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not enter into the kingdom. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forms of confidence, goodness, faithfulness, holiness. So against such things, and those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passion, passions and desires. If we in the spirit, let us walk in the spirit. Let us not become conceited or walking one another in the moment. Okay, thank you. A beautiful uh, um, passage of scripture, isn't it? Um, emphasizing uh, anything to do with walking with the Holy Spirit and the fruits of the Holy Spirit. These three chapters are key. Romans chapter 8, uh, Galatians chapter 5, Ephesians chapter 5. <clears throat> Very important passages when it comes to uh, Holy Spirit, being filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, So we know Romans chapter 8 verse 14 concluded uh, by saying that you have to be led by the Holy Spirit. What happens when we are not led by the Holy Spirit? We are led by the flesh. <clears throat> we will give in to our fleshly desires. Sure, there are some, you know, we have good desires. Uh, you know, not, not everything we desire is evil per se. Right? Um, there, yes, isn't it? Um, but at the same time, we need to recognize that, uh, you know, scriptures like Matthew chapter 15, verse 19 says, for every sexual immoral, uh, immoral desires, it comes from the heart. Sorry? Okay. <clears throat> um, and Proverbs 4.23 says, guard your heart uh, diligently, right? Uh, because if you don't guard it, it is easy to be offended. That means it is easy to fall, become a trap <clears throat> or trip, right? So uh, 15, uh, Galatians 5.16, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, sorry. It starts off by saying, but I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. So, um, 
have you seen a hungry person okay now uh, who is hungry what makes a person hungry or what makes a person desire food okay so that is a very obvious thing isn't it but here's the thing uh, in one of the books of cs lewis i forget he talks about the flesh um, so he says there are two kinds of people okay now if you go give a food to someone who is very hungry and starving they will grab it but it is also the same with a person who's have had abundance of food and they've tasted something abundantly and they then they crave for more of it yes so as let's say for example as a porn addict or as, or as an alcoholic i've tasted it i've seen it i want to see some more i want to see some more i want to see some more just one more peg one more peg just one more peg some more just one more video just one more video what is happening yeah your appetite for a particular thing is increasing are you with me your appetite for a particular thing is increasing because you're feeding it more same thing applies with with the spirit right or you've tasted him you want more of him you want more of him isn't it and so uh and that's why fasting is beautiful it kills your flesh it is teaching your flesh to be sub, uh, to be submissive right it is uh, you're changing the perspective of it it's like you're not gratifying the desires of the flesh you are saying who is the master Are you with me? Yes, no, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> One of the sins of Sodom and Gomorrah. When we think of Sodom and Gomorrah, it's not just uh, their sexual immorality. It is uh, in Ezekiel. It says that they had abundance of food, and in the context, you see that they were not being hospitable to the cities around them. Hospitality was not uh, their. mark of a value or a principle and because they did not know what hospitality was that that's why they wanted to misbehave with the guests of lot understood is like hey i heard there are guests in your house send them out did if you are a hospitable person that is not how you behave with your guests it would mean that means there are a lot of things happening there they did not know how to host that's what hospitality is uh, i i heard someone say this i made a very powerful statement it made me think it says if you know how to host people you will know how to host god right and 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 because of the abundance of everything that uh, sodom and gomorrah had um they were blinded arrogant uh, pride um and they were not hospitable are you with me okay so when you when we learn to not gratify our flesh we are also learning to host his presence we are learning to being led by the holy spirit right and for us to lead uh, to, for us to follow someone we you, you need to see where they are going and you need to hear what they are saying yeah and so your your spirit man comes to life and say okay so you begin to hear him you begin to recognize his presence that okay he is here he is speaking being sensitive to the leading of his holy spirit is uh, is very crucial okay to say the least all right so uh, how do i do this practically how do we walk in the spirit practically day by day is to be filled with the spirit it is a command right and i've used this example so many times we christians are very good at following part of that command don't be drunk in wine 
Absolutely. You know, no pasta. Shoo, no chance. I only drink grape juice, pasta. <laughs> hey, we are very good at following the first half of the commandment. What about the second half? Complete ignorance. You know, full. Be filled with the whole. Ah, okay. It's all right. You know. <laughs> but be filled with the spirit. Now, we're, uh, at a, in, the, in the next page, we'll look at uh, when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, what happens. But we'll get to that in just a second. Okay. So pray and ask the Holy Spirit to fill you, welcome Him, um, be filled with His Spirit, um, stay spiritually minded. Stay spiritually minded. Uh, for though, Romans chapter 8, verse 5, it says, For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. For those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Okay, anything, whatever you want to add to the things of the flesh, you can feel free to add to it. Okay, keeping in mind Matthew chapter 15, verse 19. And but those who live according to the Spirit, they set their minds on the things of the Spirit. Passion translation says, those who are motivated by the flesh only pursue what benefits themselves. But those who live by the impulses of the Holy Spirit are motivated by to pursue spiritual realities. A uh, different contemporary version, uh, contemporary English version says, everyone who is ruled by the Spirit thinks about spiritual things. Uh, but those who live following the Spirit are thinking about what Spirit wants them to do. Good news, Bible. Uh, those who live as the Spirit tells them to have their minds controlled by, by what the Spirit wants. Ah. Holy Spirit uh, is, is the God, one of the Godheads of the Trinity. Uh, you know, from from Genesis chapter one, he's been involved. Right? The Spirit was brooding over the waters. He's moving. The Spirit of God is constantly on the move. Um, right? Are we following? Is the big question. Right, and uh, I think Isaiah chapter sixty-three verse ten says. Uh, the Holy Spirit was grieved. Right? The Holy Spirit was grieved. Isaiah 63, 10. In uh, 2 Samuel 23, verse 1, 2, and 3, this is, these, uh, this is recorded as the last words of David. Uh, then David writes, the Spirit of the Lord uh, is uh, on me, and His word is on me, or it is on my tongue. He writes that. And so uh, people most of the times ask, okay, where is the Holy Spirit mentioned in the Old Testament? Uh, yeah, how many verses do you want? <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, Holy Spirit, He is power. Stay spiritually minded. <clears throat> ask the Holy Spirit for help. And then speak the word. Okay, uh, so four important uh, points. Uh, how do I do this practically? That means how do we walk in the Spirit? How do we live in the Spirit? And how uh, how can we be led by the Spirit? One, stay filled with the Holy Spirit, right? Uh, he wants to fill us. One of the things we teach in the baptism of the Holy Spirit is that, uh, you know, John the Baptist says, I baptize you in the water, but there comes after me. Who will baptize you in, in Spirit and in fire, right? And when John the Baptist is saying, he's talking about Jesus. He baptizes you. So first thing, who baptizes us? Jesus, right? He is the baptizer, right? And then we know this in Acts chapter 2. Uh, it says that he came like a rushing wind, right? A sound was heard. There was an audible sound that when this wind came. So uh, the Hebrew word for spirit uh, is ruah. And it means breath and wind. It's it's used in you know it's, it's breath and wind. And so when the wind of God came, when He came, there was a sound that broke the barrier of the city. 
Okay, uh, we can talk about just the importance of releasing a sound. I mean, why do we emphasize on speaking the word? Because you're releasing a sound. God said and there was. Right? He released a sound and then there was. Right? And so when the Holy Spirit came, there was a sound barrier that was over the city that was broken. And he came like a rushing wind. Right? So... Uh, that word rush is an interesting word. When would you rush? When you're in a hurry. When you want to be somewhere really badly. Isn't it? Airport rush, rush hour traffic, we say that. And so that, that it goes on to say, it simply means to say that the Holy Spirit, when he came like a rushing wind, he really wanted to be there more than they wanted him. Right? And so when we say that stay filled with the Holy Spirit, we need to know that He longs to fill us. He wants to fill us. He desires to fill us in the fullness of who He is. So we being filled with the Holy Spirit, we stay, and that helps us in staying spiritually minded. Ask the Holy Spirit for help and speak the word. And now we will look at, as a, as a concluding section, how do I know if I'm walking in the Spirit? Okay, last section, guys. So pay attention and we'll close. Okay, this whole course is coming down to this. <laughs> so how can I how can we tell if I'm really living filled with the spirit and walking in the spirit? First of all, I will manifest the fruit of the spirit. I will manifest the fruit of the Spirit, or the fruits of the Spirit. Uh, we can read about it in Galatians. We just read, right? Uh, in 5, 19 to 21. Patience, kindness, gentleness, long-suffering, etc. Okay? I will be manifesting the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, I will edify others. So, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 says, be filled with the Spirit. So when you're filled with the Spirit, you sing, okay, sing songs, speak to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Okay, and then I will be in a place of communion with the Lord, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It causes you to worship. Those who worship me must worship in spirit and in truth. There we go. And finally, the last point is, I will walk with humility and submission, submitting to one another in the fear of God. So four, four simple points is, I will manifest the fruit of the Spirit. It's not complicated. Right? Um, I will edify others. Does your life edify your neighbor? You can ask that question. Does your life edify another person? You need to ask yourself that question, right? There's something about a presence of a person. Presence is powerful, right? And we all have this, uh, your individual presence, for example, like even if you're closing your eyes, uh, you know, is, and if someone's standing next to you, you kind of feel there's, okay, there's something there, isn't it? That's the power of just a presence, like an innate thing that we carry. It's as simple as that. Um, how many of you have been in a place where you in a room, for example, like this, and a person who always makes you laugh and happy and you know walks in and the entire room lights up. Have you been in a situation like that? Like, okay, you know, I've been part of you know friends circle and whatnot, okay, where you know the room can be dull, kind of okay, they are all looking at the phone, and this person comes and says, Hey, what's up, guys? Every the whole room, like, like hey, you know, and something about their presence. Right? It's, and at the same time, the opposite. A person who always carries this negative uh, uh, approach to life and there's nothing uh, like, and they will step into the room is like, oh my gosh, she is here, she is here. Uh, and, uh, it, well, and how much more with the Holy Spirit in us? Right? And so you need to ask yourself that question. Uh, you know, when you step into the room, 
um, does that that does the atmosphere of the room change? Not because of who you are, just who you are, but because of the one who you carry. Does it impact? Does your life edify one another? Right? Are you are you walking in humility and submission? Because uh, in this day and age, humility has been portrayed as weakness. The first person to apologize is always seen as a weak person. Yes or no? But you have to be strong to be humble. Right? You have to be strong to be humble. You have to be strong to reach out and lift a weak person up. Right? You have to be strong. If you want to jump over this wall, you need to be strong to bend down and give your back so someone can climb over your back and jump the wall. See, brother? <laughs> are you with me? Okay, so these are the four simple truths um, that uh, tells us if we are walking in the spirit. Okay, um, so the remainder of the chapters uh, just simply echo these first fours of what we've learned. All right, um, and so I would urge you, if possible, I uh, can also look listen to the sermon series, uh, look into his uh, the sermon notes. It's in more detail about it. All right, so. Uh, so this, the course on holiness, we began by looking at the Holy One of Israel, the Holy One, who's three times, who's thrice holy. Right? There is no one like him. Uh, there is none like him. His the holiness adorns his house from that to how he desires for his children to uh, to be holy as he is holy. And then he begins this invitation. He, uh, he calls us to repent. And then he's made a way for us. Right? Um to live and overcome life. So that is uh, the course on holiness. I hope uh, there's something that you could learn and it's edified and empowered you. And uh, thank you for joining. God bless you all. Okay. Um, continue to work on your assignments. I'll, I'll be looking forward to correcting it. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Have a good day.